Hello, I'm Jay Roberts. And I'm Brandon Bellini. And you have entered Jam Tracks Connected, where we take a three-level approach to jamming over one of our jam tracks. And make sure you like and subscribe down below, and that way you get the videos as they come out. We got a special one for you, and this one is near and dear to us. This is the Howard Roberts Tourista Jam Track. It's an original, actually. It is. Howard right. Roberts original. And uh, we ended up recording it on a tribute album that we did for HR called the HR Project mm -hmm. and uh, some great musicians and things like that we'll talk about. But, you know, the tune itself has got this really nice kind of groove. It's kind of like a kind of a moon dance feel. I don't know. It seems a little that? moon dancey. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of moon dancey. But <laughs> even though this one came out a decade before moon that's dance. That's true. This is this came out first and it's a little hipper, I think. It has, mm, I'd, I'd agree. It has some cooler changes <laughs> I like moon in dance. it. And, you know, it's the thing is, is that, you know, as I start to analyze it, we go, whoa, what the heck? He's got some things happening in here that yeah. that are different. So why don't we just, uh, why don't we just play it? I'll play the head and uh, yeah, yeah. jam over let's it. Jump in. Let's, let's do some basic uh, entry level stuff. Yeah. So kind of treating it like a, in a way, like a blues, in a, I guess you could say. It kind of is a minor blues in a sense, right? In a, in a loose sense, in, in a, a very loose, loose sense. sense. <laughs> yeah. Let's give it yeah, a shot. Yeah, let's, let's check it out. So Jay, you got the head? All right. I think we got a little intro here, right? Yeah, there is a little intro. Yeah, 
every now and then you hear a note there that's not in the... Every now and then I hear this E, this E natural that you're playing. Yes. Yeah, you're right. kind of bringing it into, into a different... a little E natural there. Yes. There's some reasons why I'm thinking about that. I think you are. So this E natural, let's talk about it, is bringing us into the fact that this G minor 7 and this A minor 7 are really a 2 chord and a 3 chord in the key of F major. So I can look at an F major scale. That E natural in there. Yeah, and then you bring up a good point about this modal approach, which is something that, you know, HR didn't really, he wasn't really into the modal approach of thinking. He was more into a, a major scale, minor scale, altered scale, kind of a. Like a key center approach. Like a key center approach, you would call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah exactly. so I would say the key center of this is really the key of F. Yep. But, but some guys would think of that as maybe G Dorian. Yes. Right? You have a name for each one of the tones, which is a little bit of redundancy, right? You've got like, we call it F major, but some guys call it F major, G Dorian, A Phrygian, yes. B flat Lydian, and there's seven names for the same set of notes. And uh, there's some cats that think that's redundant, too much, too much information. And, too... and then there are other cats that, that believe that's the holy grail. I mean, yes. without modes, you, you don't have anything, yes. right? Yes, yes. So, so to accommodate that, we went ahead and put G. Dorian in the title, uh, knowing that HR would be looking down on us going, eh, I don't know about that, <laughs> you know. But uh, so that's kind of what's going on. And that, that tells us that it really isn't a G minor blues. Yeah, yeah. Because see, when, you, when I play A minor 7 here, that's right. it has, look at it, it has an E in it. That note's not in a traditional G minor key. Yeah, it should be E flat. You got right. it. So that changes things a little bit. That does. It does. So putting that E in there sounds yep. good. It, it sounds does. Pretty it sounds, good. sounds great. And, and you know, other cats look at that as um, it's a G minor six chord. Mm. So it's like so. G minor six has an E. Yeah, in it. it has there an E in is. it. So it's a G minor seven. Take the this flat seven down to a six. Yeah. And now you've got that way to view it too. So. Um, as we know, there are many uh, languages to surround the same subject in music, That's and right. um, the more versed we are at understanding that aspect of mm. it, um, it, it makes it easier to speak with a wider range of people. Yeah, I think right? so. What I think, think that's that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. and it all kind of comes back to what the chords are. That informs us of what we use that A minor 7 to find out, oh, there's an E in there. We probably yeah. have to address that in our soloing, right? Yeah. We want to probably put that in some sort of context in our solo, and we better not be playing an A minor and an E flat at the same time. Exactly. We're going to have some clashing notes, and our ear will probably just tell us right away, oh, that's that's not the right one. So in level one soloing, when you play a G minor pentatonic, mm. it avoids the no whole e. subject. No E, no E flat. <laughs> yeah. That's a neat thing about, you know, uh, pentatonic scales in, in one aspect is that it avoids some of the mm. subjects that need to be addressed when you add yeah. the next notes and, the, you know, the next two notes in there to make it a full seven note scale. That's right. That's right. So pentatonics are great for that in, in blues. Now, the other thing, talking about rhythm for a second, because yeah. we haven't really done much of that. No, um, not really on these shows yet so let's talk about the groove so we, we got these first two chords just a vamp between uh trista and moon dance here it's a G minor and, night. oh okay copyright right. i got better, I got better. <laughs> so uh and then it has this unique little uh bridge i guess you could call it oh yeah and they're all dominant chords like it would be in a like a dominant blues, really. Mm-hmm. Or know. even like the turnaround to a rhythm changes or something like yeah, that. Yeah, It's this exactly. back cycle kind of thing going on is what they call it. Yep, it sure is. So what yeah. we got? So what do you sure. got? So we got a little D9. Yeah. To a G13. 
based on a G7. G7, right? yeah. And then a C9. Yeah. And then a D7 sharp 9. Yeah, now that one's interesting there. Yeah. Because that tension that this chord gives you, this D7 altered, is really leading you back to this whole G minor idea. Right. 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 Would you say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we got... Uh, Yep. So when we solo, we're kind of we have to address the fact that we are not playing in G minor anymore. We're not yeah. playing in F major anymore. We're not playing in G Dorian anymore. That's right. This bridge is a standalone little piece. It and, sure is. And it kind of throws you at first. If you were at a jam session, you played this tune, people would be like, "What? You know, it's a little tricky." Where moon sure. dance you can get away with because it's all managed within a key center. Very, very diatonic. Very, very yeah. diatonic, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, so then after that bridge, we go back to our vamp. our vamp or our, you know, verse section again. Oh, and you know, we got to talk about this oh, on dear. the chords. So, well, so what we do is some people go like this. So they go to this. If you looked at it as triads, it's G minor 7 or, yeah, G minor 7, A minor 7. And they'll put this like, it looks like a... B, hey, that looks like a B flat major triad. It looks like a triad. B flat major triad, but it's really... Not. It is not. It's really just a G minor seven. That's right. Look at that. So we got this. Yes. It's right. just a G minor again in an inversion. So yep. you'll see that. It's an uh, inversion. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So that's what's happening. So when you're comping, you can go like that. That's really cool. It's really slick. Yeah, it's deceiving how uh, some chords have chords in it, right? Like a G minor 7 certainly has a B flat major triad in it. Yes. Tucked away. But if I took a B flat major triad, dropped a G on the bottom, all of a sudden it's G minor 7. There you so go. knowing those little tricks are, are pretty fun where you can, uh, you awesome. can really hint at other chords by uh, playing a kind of a different chord in there. That's good stuff. Yeah, and now. I like that. Then he throws this tag, which oh, is dear. kind of interesting because theoretically, eh, I would, in fact, I would like to have some of the uh, our advanced jazz <laughs> folks out there that are watching this show chime in to what they think, how they would like to explain this one. I would love to hear it. And I wish I would have had an opportunity to ask HR what he was thinking about when he played these chords. But it's not that complicated. It's pretty easy. It's like... I don't know if you can see that on my camera, okay. So it kind of looks suspiciously like a E-flat triad. Yep. Right? And then it looks like a D minor triad, except he goes, and then down a whole step, and then he goes, instead of this note, he goes, which is really Bizarre. screwy. So. And then he ends right here now interestingly enough i recorded this album many years ago on my first album with um joey de francesco in fact yeah and Killer album <laughs> and what, so good. yeah and, and i tell you when i got to that part i couldn't figure it out uh you know by ear or anything and i was really kind of blown away by what's he thinking about because theoretically it didn't really jive with any of this other stuff that's going on and uh, a good friend of mine, John Hannum, had a, he has really good ears. He uh, he figured it out yeah. and showed it to me. And he, and I go, are you sure about that? Oh, that's, that's that it. lick. It's a cool that's lick. It. Let's see what it is. It's tough. Yeah, and then he goes like this. And I look at these as like fourth stacks, really. Yeah. Ending on, ending on a G minor again. Yeah. And those fourth stacks can be thought of as some ultra-dominant chords as well, right? Sure. We kind of uh, figured this one's kind of part of a 
kind of an A7 alter. Yes, absolutely. And this one it's like, is it, kind of a D7 alter. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, kind of like yeah. a 251 going back to this. With all dominant, With all though, right? dominant so, alter dominant chords. A7 alt, yeah. D7 alt to G minor 7. That's it. Yeah. So... That's some pretty slick stuff that's happening in this tune. Uh, you know, you could also look at those as secondary dominance. Mm -hmm. A7. There you go. Secondary dominant. It's kind of like a six chord. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right, it's kind of like an E flat seven. We see that all the time in, on a in minor G, turnaround. Yep, in G minor, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. So after further examination, cool. yeah, <laughs> we go, when you listen to HR solo over this thing, and you go, oh, he's, he plays this really cool lick. You just kind of a feel. Kind of a G. Melodic minor. Yeah. Yeah, it's yes. got a really cool sound. And then we went, oh, you know what? This thing is really kind of G melodic minor-ish. Mm. So we're gonna throw that in for this uh, for the next level of more advanced uh, stuff when we, when yes. we play next, right? You yeah, think that's we're a gonna good idea? address the f turnarounds, the mm -hmm. dominant chords, right? So we're gonna play some D seven ideas mm -hmm. for the modal guys. Mixolydian is pretty much that yep. key there. You know, we want to address yep. that that's kind of, you know, you can play D Mixolydian, it's kind of like the key of G major. And this one's kind of like the key of C major because it's a G Mixolydian. This one's kind of like key of F major, back to our F major. And then our five chord, so there we can throw the kitchen sink at it. Kitchen <laughs> the kitchen sink, as we like to a call it. A lot of things there. And, uh, it's a lot of, it's, yeah. I know this is a lot of theory, a lot of stuff we're talking about. It, You know, if any of this is sounds complicated or uh, needs more clarification, uh, we give lessons. We're here. Yes. <laughs> we're always available. <laughs> That's right. Online lessons, in-person lessons, whatever you need. You got to play that cool head again for me. Uh, play the head? I'm still trying to learn this one myself, so okay. it, it helps me to hear you, man. I, I All really, right, let's do I really it. I like this one. All right, here we go. I like this first chord that he does like this. Whoa, it's like a nine, huh? Yeah, ninth, nine. ninth in the bass, yeah. Oh. Thank you. 
Andre. Thank you.